the photocopy. So what it is, is the James Watt & Co portable copying machine. So this is one of the two early technologies for uh, making copies of letters. So just to show you what we have, so on one side there is a writing slope, you can write out your letters, and then on the other side we have interesting parts. So there is a handle that comes out, which fits over here, which frees up a drawer which contains this extraordinary contraption. I'll keep taking bits out. <laughs> Tin lined drawer, <coughs> which also has a brush that comes with it. Very just as a, a simple photocopy. And then within, we open up the recess, within um, the lid, there are further exciting bits. So we have something called a drying book, a wetting book, 70 odd bits of very thin paper and an instruction manual. So this is, um, so Bolton and Watt, the, I mean, the famous, um, Authentic instruments maker. Yeah, uh, making steam engines, had lots of um, correspondence and wanting to keep copies of it. They did, Watt developed this method of what's called wet transfer. So you write your letter out with a special ink, you damp that, press a piece of paper to it and run it through your portable copying press. But it has two problems. One, that gives you a mirror image. And two, you have to have an ink that allows you to do that. So the mirror image he got round by commissioning very fine tissue paper so the ink would soak through it so you would read you wouldn't read the mirror image but you would see what had soaked through which gives you a sort of slightly um, spongy copy but the ink remained a problem and remained a problem really until the mid 90s century when aniline dyes came in um, which allowed easier copying but we have one other exciting Thing that was kept in with, with our box. Which are these? They look very um, pre-processing when, when they arrived. So two of these. Any ideas? Chocolate brown. <laughs> Try it. <laughs> it is. So this is. And again, there's um, remain, just remains of a, of a wrapper that went round one that I've managed to track down. So this is a portable ink cake that was developed slightly later than this. So this dates from, well, they started selling these in 1795. IL1 dates from around, you know, the late, between 1806 and 1811. Um, but these ink cakes date from um, eight, around about 1831, somebody called Morrison developed this idea of a portable ink cake, so you could rub it down um, with a bit of water to pr pr produce ink. Because what's, there's lots of correspondence about people having difficulty with his inks. He provided it in a two-part powder that he made up. Uh, it didn't entirely work, and the idea was you would then fill up your <laughs> bottle that allows you to um, transport a third of a pint of ink and this would originally have come with a Wedgwood, Wedgwood being one of um, Watt's you know, correspondence, 
would have had a Wedgwood um, inkwell as well. So yes, the fall, and it took about, you had to plan a day ahead to damp your paper, to get into the thing. So it's not, not quite instantaneous copying, but, and these proved to be quite popular, but not within business circles to start with. So they were expensive, about six guineas this. We're not sure, they came in three sizes. I'm not entirely sure, I think this is the quarto size. Um, but we have, a lot of correspondence from William Godwin between the last few years of the 18th century. He was given one of these and, and used it to record his outgoing correspondence. Um, so this fits in beautifully with some of our manuscript collections and also with another we have um, the Noctograph, which is Ralph Wedgwood's different Wedgwood family, well, different branch of the Wedgwood family, his early carbon paper method of, of copy. Neither this nor the carbon Ralph Wedgwoods were particularly successful but they were both technologies that, that were then taken up again once typewriters had been invented and once aniline dyes had been invented. So this this in a way became what's confusingly called letterpress or copy press copying which is almost a kind of business correspondence in the late night. 19th century, but a lovely, fantastic example.